Dear Hecht followers, today's topic is screen buffer with a session data set. I already prepared a video with the screen buffer, but as Marco Simic find out, it's not really practical if you use more than one client because each client overrides each other. So first let us check how the issue was with the old screen buffer. So I open two tabs. Each tab is a session. So on the first one, we create a buffer with screen one, two, three, and it's work. We can go back, go forward. Now, if we switch, to the second session, we can go back to screen two. And now we jump to screen one because he overrides us. And yeah, this is the issue with the tech based session buffer. What is a data set? So in Unified, we have two data sets. So if you open the snippets, you see we have a screen data set and a session data set. The difference is the scope of quality. So the screen is a wallet on the screen and a session is wallet on a session and the session is the browser tab and each browser tab is a client. With the snippet example, you have the possibility to add or update existing values with the for in loop. You iterate over all values by the index. With the for off loop, you iterate over all entries. With the exist, you check the existency of the given name and with the remove, you delete the entry by the given name. I replace the tags with the data set and let us check how the result is. So we have two sessions here. So I create a screen buffer, one, two, three, four, five. I switch to the second tab, three, two, one, four, five. So we have different buffers, so and they are complete independent from each other. So you see on the left, I can jump five, four, three, two, and on the right, it's two, three, five. So this is working, but how does it work? I close the second browser, I don't need it. I refresh it, that the session data set is reset it. And first, let us check in TI portal. There is one script, it's in the loaded event of the header, so you can also place it on your start screen. I create this buffer array with five elements. So if you need more, you can adapt it here. And I check if the data set is existing. If not, I create my data set called screen buffer, which includes the screen buffer array. On the button for the screen sheets is nothing special. It's only the system function change screen to replace the screen in the screen window. But on the screen itself, in the loaded events, I call my global function write screen array. I hand over the name of the screen with item.name in this function. I first check if the data set is existing. If yes, I move all elements one position up in the array. So the latest screen is on the first position in the array. And after this moving, I override uh, the dataset again. This for loop is only for checking uh, what is inside of the array. So let us check it in the runtime. So if I press screen one, it's in the first element, the second one, the third one. So it's moved inside of the array. So if we open the trace viewer, you can see the buffer looks like the drone one. That latest screen is on the buffer zero. So what happened if I'm pressing the previous screen? Okay, he, he moved back. So if we check what's in our array again, so you see he removes the latest screen. So our latest screen is now screen two. And if we click again on the screen three, so he inserted again to the array. What does this previous button? Let us check it in, tier, in the TI portal. So we open. Okay, first I show you it on on the header screen. So I only call the previous the global function previous screen, and the return value of the screen is the previous screen name itself. And with this change screen system function, I change the screen. Let us open the, the previous screen functionality. So first. I check if the buffer is existing and 
the current screen is on the top. So array null is our current screen and we want to move it. Um, it's important we need to move it two positions because by, op by the opening of the screen he inserted it again and I have a small function it's called shift array which I'm checking if it is an array and I move the object. So after I execute the first time the shift array so the return value is screen number three by the second one it's screen number two. This is the previous screen we needed and this screen is returned from this functionality to the button and then he does the screen change. So I hope you enjoy this video. I upload this project to GitHub. Feel free to use it.